Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at WD Red. I want to follow up on some videos we did earlier in 2020 and I want to look at WD Red's range of WD Red Plus series of drives. Here they are at span.com here and if you remember early in the year we did a bunch of testing where we utilized the WD Red series of drives in the AX and RX series. For those that weren't aware, the AX series were drives that WD um, were um, kind of revealed uh, in showing that they had SMR factored inside. Uh, shingled magnetic recording, or as they said, drive managed DM shingled magnetic recording. Now, a lot of people were quite annoyed about this. It wasn't, I think the fact that it was in the drives annoyed quite a lot of people, but a lot of people more so were irritated by the fact that it wasn't really advertised by WD and it should have been on the data sheet and it should have been told to people before they started using it in their systems. And WD went ahead um, afterwards and kind of differentiated between these two series of drives with the RX series being labeled WD Red Plus with the Plus series uh, being the RX range. Now, these drives have arrived. Uh, it's a new revision. We've got them here inside our NAS. And what we're going to be doing today is kickstarting a series of videos where we're going to be bench testing these drives just like we did last time. We're utilizing a Synology NAS here, quite a powerful one. It's a 1621XS Plus. And in this NAS, we have installed three of the AX SMR drives and we've installed three of the RX WD Red Plus drives, the RX series. And what we're going to be doing today is setting up a RAID 5 on both of these independent series of drives. We're going to use three here, and we're going to create a RAID on that, and we're going to use the logs to see just how long it takes for the system to build a RAID 5 on these three 3TB three drives. It shouldn't be a huge amount of time, but I will have to skip forward, and then we're going to compare how long it takes for the RX plus CMR or conventional magnetic recording drives to build a RAID 5 as well. That's going to be this video. Then in another video, we're going to fill these drives up with data and then we're going to do a drive pull or wipe that drive and then see how long it takes the system to rebuild the RAID on these drives. Now, the reason we're using this NAS is for one, it's a six base, so we can use all six drives, but also because it's Xeon powered with a great amount of memory inside it. Consequently, it will not present really any kind of bottleneck during our testing. As you can see here, it's got eight gig of DDR4 ECC memory and a Xeon quad core 2.2 gigahertz CPU. We are gonna be running these tests again on a QNAP NAS just to keep things nice and balanced. And we're gonna be doing some performance benchmarks as well on individual drives and then performance benchmarks on three drives over 10 GBE. So again, those are future videos. But all of this long intro aside, let's start our first raid. So again, this raid is going to be conducted on the AX series. We're gonna go into the storage pool. We're gonna click create. We're gonna go for a standard raid five. We're going to um, not be going for an SHR here. We're going to go for the best performance possible. We're going to go for a RAID 5 option. And we're going to call this one WD RED RAID 5. It's going to be a RAID 5 configuration. We're using three disks. We're going to click Next. And we're going to select the drives in these first three bays. As you saw earlier, those first three bays were the drives that were WD RED or AKA the AX series. Then we're gonna click next. As you can see, we've got our three drives. We can go ahead and click apply. Now in the logs, it will show our RAID being started. I may have to refresh the logs, but no, it's appearing there. It's saying it's just started building our RAID 5 there on screen. And it's creating it, but it will still need to um, synchronize it and verify it in the background there. And that is the thing that we're looking at here. We're going to see how long it takes for it to verify that RAID 5. And that's when you know a RAID 5 has been completed. So as mentioned, these three drives here are in the RAID configuration. They are all AX drives. And what we're gonna do now is fast forward to the completion of the verification of this RAID 5. This could take upwards um, of a day, but I don't think it will utilizing three TBs in a RAID 5 environment. And remember, this is using the SMR drives or DMSMR. So I'm gonna fast forward now to the completion of this exercise. 
Okay, so our RAID 5 utilizing the WD Red DM SMR drives has completed. It completed there at 29 minutes past 2. And if we move the timer on here, we can see it took 3 hours and 19 minutes and 25 seconds. So that is the score to beat. Next thing we're going to do is create a brand new storage pool. We're going to go ahead and create a new storage pool utilizing just the other drives the raid 5 and this is going to be our wd red plus uh, storage port we're going to use three drives once again and again we now are utilizing the wd red plus series of drives we're going to go ahead click next it's going to warn us there's our wd red plus we're going to click go the log will update and as we can see it's now registered when we're beginning our brand new ray configuration build so it's going to leave there we're going to open that up there at the bottom and once again we are going to fast forward to the completion of this it's just going to verify it there in the background and for now i'm going to fast forward now to the completion of the raid 5 on the um, wd red plus cmr drives right so our second raid has completed the ones that were utilizing the wd red plus series drives and i've got to say it did take longer not just longer almost three times longer if we look at the stats here started at just before 3 p.m and ended just after uh 1 a.m in the morning so again that was 10 hours and 25 minutes overall an enormous difference between that of the dm smr drives that we saw earlier so if you were to just kind of casually glance at these numbers your first instinct would be wait so the smr drives are better because they're quicker and ultimately that's just not true what you're looking at here is a demonstration of one of the key differences other than of course shingle magnetic recording on these drives and that is about the cache now the shingle magnetic recording drives or the dm smr drives uh, from wd these drives arrive with 256 megabytes of cache whereas the plus series that use conventional magnetic recording so that's the even balance of read write they arrive with just 64 megabytes of cache and this is important now normally you would not see that much cache on a drive unless it was at least 10 to 12 terabytes in size. Generally, the amount of cache you get is scaled accordingly against the drive. Both of them are 5400 RPM uh, rotations per minute. And again, some of them use that IntelliPower feature. But what I will say is the cache being so large is because of shingled magnetic recording. When you have drives writing uh, with this system, what happens is, the drive is allowed to write as much as it can, the write overlaps, and then later on in the down times, the system then rebalances everything. It puts everything in its place and it basically pushes that job till later on. And it's able to do this thanks to that large area of cache. And that is why the speeds between them are so significantly different. A RAID 5, I've said on this channel many, many times before, will take around 12 hours typically and it can take longer once you go to drives larger than 10 tb so 10 hours may seem an enormous amount of time for that raid 5 build on this nas you know significantly higher than that of the just over three hours of those smr drives but remember it's because of that cache and the reason we're doing these tests today is to talk about the performance difference between them because wd red in dmsmr is still very much available and Although I'm not sure I recommend them, um, the DSMR series of drives, I certainly recommend the CMR series because they use a tried and tested formula of uh, read and write actions. So that has been our RAID 5 build test. This is part one. In part two, what we're going to be doing is filling these drives up with data. We're going to take them in turn, so we're not going to run them at the same time. Both of these, we're going to create a shared folder on each of these different directories and then we're going to fill them with all of their data both of them have got six terabytes of space available in that raid 5 and both of them i'm going to transfer over six terabytes of data and the plan is to see how long it takes both of them to fill up 
and ultimately give us some indication of the performance. And in part three is when we're going to do our rebuild test. And this is where the big difference between DM, SMR and CMR will be displayed, I think. But I'm going to wrap things up here. Do stay tuned for part two in this series uh, when we're going to fill up these drives and see what happens. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you want to learn more. Click subscribe um, if you, know, you want to find out more about this sort of thing. And of course, do visit the links in the description to both Span.com and NAS Compares to stay abreast on all things to do with network attached storage, data storage in general, and to give you a bit of free, helpful advice in choosing your next storage system. I will see you next time.